told this amazing story, which you are, I think, I, I mean, I, I, I say it all the time. I can't thank you enough because as you know, when I first met you, I was, you know, CEO of a tech company called gate master technology. And I had been, and, and I apologize guys, I'm actually just about to hit the road. So I'm outside uh, before I, I go to another meeting. So hopefully you can hear me and see me. Okay. Yes, but um, it's perfect. But, you know, just as a CEO of a tech company and for years, I just had this like gut feeling that I needed to be on more stages and that getting on stages would help me help my company and my team be more successful, move the business forward. Because one of the things that I kept hearing was that, you know, stages are the best way for people to get to know you. And if you guys know, you know, how sales work in business or any industry, you know, a lot of times it's the trust that we have with other people the relationships that we're building and stages I knew were a great way to quickly get that with other people. And, you know, when I came to Amanda, I was scared to death. I still call it, uh, you know, I just had to, I had to be on stage in Florida two weeks ago and I'm like, it's 10 minutes of terror. Cause you know, like for me, it's, you know, it's very difficult to, as, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't like to call myself an introvert because I don't know if that would be an accurate description, but you know, I still had, I still have reservations about being on stages. The nice thing is though, um, what you did for me was not only help me gain the confidence to do it, but really also understand that why it's my duty to do it and how to organize what I needed to organize in order to feel comfortable in, and be able to make that next step to getting onto stages. So believe it or not, I just booked another stage speaking to a group of graduates at a beauty college uh next month actually on your neck the woods salt lake city so i'll be hitting you up to see you too um, but you know once once i got that confidence and really had a better understanding of how it would work uh you know they just started rolling in yeah i'm gonna take this can you still hear me if i take this one out yes 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 i don't know why this one's not staying in yes but, yeah you so what have been some of your biggest successes you've had since you had you went through that 10 minutes of terror and you decided you know you're here what that was just last week that was just two weeks ago but yeah. I, I just always laugh and go oh you know it's still it's still scary and yeah. i realized that, that even after the training that i did with you and after having some big successes. So the first year after I had worked with you, I set a, a goal for myself to get on three of the biggest industry stages that I work in. I work in attractions. One was IAPA and one was the World Water Park Association. The other was um, the Florida Attraction. So those are three big bodies that if I know I could have a lot of influence for both my my uh, my company, but then also the industry, if I could get on those stages. So that was my goal. I was able to book IAPA. I was able to book Florida Attractions. I didn't get on the WWA stage, yes. but I got booked to travel with Women Impact Tech, which ended up leading to so many more opportunities. I spoke in, um, San Francisco, Boston, and Denver yep. that year. And, um, you know, it's pretty amazing. It was, a, it was an amazing experience. So while I, I fell short on the goal of getting with the WWA, and I'm crossing my fingers, I'm going to get it this year because that's not until October. Um, I did add that additional stage, and it ended up just opening up so many more doors and opportunities. So I feel like it was still a big win. And those yes. are the three, ma the three major stages. But as soon as I put that energy out there and I was willing to do it, um, they just started coming. You know, yep. this, this is, this is I, I, don't, I don't know how else to describe that, but just once I was open to the idea of being on stages, the stages were finding me and still continue to find me. Yes. Well, you shifted your identity to, instead of sitting on the sidelines, to being a speaker. So as you shifted your identity, the law, the laws of the universe said, oh, yes, this is what you do. So your identity was, so you opened up your awareness to it. It's so amazing. Yeah. And, and so what was, I mean, for me, I remember a lot of times just going through your stories because I think I talk a lot about people, your, your seminar story and your juice, what you have is as close as your neck vein. And there were things that you hadn't like places in your past of the struggles you'd overcome that you weren't really speaking of or shining light on those. And maybe you're not even doing that in your speaking, but I remember that was such an empowering place just for you to be totally you and shine that spotlight on who you are. And that was enough. And you are worthy. And ultimately it's not even about you. Yeah. It's about them. I mean, that's what I yeah. love, like that, that juice of the, of that. So it just, and, and then I remember for you, you weren't visible because we had been friends on Facebook for a couple of years, at least before we, um, you, you and I started coaching together. And I had no idea that you were a CEO of a tech company. I thought you were like, yeah. you know, whatever I thought. Right. And it's just like, so to put, yeah. and you, start, you, started bragging, you started bragging, you started not like, in a egotistical way, but she started putting the spotlight on her successes. I think that's been a big theme of this week where a lot of people here are not sharing that side of themselves. So you really embody holistically all the parts of you. And I know most of your audience comes, your speaking gigs now come from LinkedIn. It's not Facebook and that's more friends, but it's been such a fun journey to watch you. And it just is just getting started. Yeah. I feel like it's just getting started. And, you know, um, I, if I, if I also speak to like, you know, what speaking did for my business in terms of, you know, we just, we just had an event last week uh, at SeaWorld in Orlando. So I have a small team in Orlando and they went to this event and they kept, they came back saying, Sandra, I had no idea how popular you were. And, you know, and not that that's the goal, 
Yeah. But the fact that people were mentioning that they were watching my lives, that they've seen me on stages, that they've seen more of me. And like you, you know, I think many people, our company was 30 years old. We were one of the oldest brands in the space and I was not the founder. I, you know, I, I came up uh, through the company starting off as the youngest and only woman in the company. So as you can imagine, there's, there was all sorts of baggage that I had with regards to the business and my role and getting on stages, you know, how do I tell that story? Right. You know, what does that look like? And, um, I, I think, I think for me, you know, that exposure, that getting known, the fact that people are taking notice is huge and it's yeah. good for the business because, uh, they didn't have a face behind who we were. They mm -hmm. already knew our logo and they knew the brand, but like you, they didn't know that it was run by somebody like me and that I had these ideas and that I had an expertise that I could share and that people are benefiting from it. And, you know, uh, I, I can just say right now, I'm on my way to go meet with, um, a group of celebrities that are looking to open a park that is, um, really focused on accessibility for everybody. And to me, that's a very marginalized group. So now that I've been putting myself in this position, more and more opportunities where I can have an even bigger impact than just the work that I do are coming. And I think that's something that people don't realize, like, you know, all of this success that we can have through speaking and continuing to have the grit that it takes to do what you need to do to get to the next level is um, going to open the doors for so many things that you maybe not don't even expect. But, you know, the, as long as your, your goal is to have an impact, I think um, I think the right people will find you. And yep. you do have to be vocal and you do have to be out there and not everybody's going to like it. Right. And that's, right. that's just the truth. You know, not everybody's going to like, uh, that you're doing these things and be supportive, but most people are. And a lot of the times, some of those people are people that you need to connect with to be able to, you know, collaborate. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, I can't thank you enough for what you've done. Oh, thank you. Me. Oh, it's been a pleasure. And I, I just love the story from, to see that you were literally afraid. And now once you got out of, you got out of your own way, you are such a service for the greater good. And it's, it's bigger than us. Like our well, fears are a lot of times our fears, you know, the enemy uses a fear because he knows he's blocking your blessing. So do you, I heard this recently, the person who is in a football game or basketball game, the person carrying the ball, carrying the ball, they're the one that everybody's going after and trying to attack because there's an anointing yeah. on your ball. There's an anointing on your blessing. And so as you move to the other side and you move beyond your fear and, and even investing in yourself, investing, investing to learn these skills. So what would you tell people who are like, I'm afraid of the investment or I'm, I'm afraid it won't come back to me or I'm afraid what if I can do it for me, but other, but it won't work. I can't go out there and enroll people or get booked to speak, whatever limiting belief they have just real quick. If you want to, cause that's where some people are. Uh, I would say that, um, you know, the best advice and actually one of my mantras is like, do it scared. You know, you just, you're going to be scared. It's going to be, you're going to be scared to spend money. You're going to be scared to, um, you're going to be scared to get on stages. You're going to yeah. be scared to get, you know, every step of the way, booking it, you know, if you're trying to get these things booked, I mean, every step of the way, do it scared, you yes. know? And, yes. and I, I hope that's great advice, but that's, that is something so I tell good. myself all the time. It's, it, it, and, and I don't know when that popped, that, that came full circle for me where I understood that. And so now, you know, when I'm doing something big or something that's super scary, I just remind myself of that. Do it scared. That's where the big stuff happens, yes. right? It's so true. It's like, and I'm almost like excited hearing you say that because really yeah. fear and excitement are the same thing. When you yes. really tune into your fear, those same feelings are actually exciting. You're actually, yeah. and you're living, you're not lame, comfortable Connie sitting on the couch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, so good. That, that's what I hope you said everybody there. Do it scared. It's, it's, it's scared. It's, yeah. Amen. Well, thank you for your time. I know it's a precious resource. Good luck today. I know you're going to rock it out and I can't wait for you to come back into my inbox and tell me. Awesome. Well, I appreciate yeah. you having me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.